I want you to close your eyes and to pray and to tell the Lord whatever he has for you, you are going to get it in Jesus' name. Amen. Please close your eyes, open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer and say, Lord, reach out to me. Speak your word to my heart. Help me, Lord, to hear. Help me, Lord, to understand. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our Father, we do thank you. We bless your name because we know you are a great God. Lord, we know you are mighty. We know there is no problem we cannot solve. There is no predicament we cannot overcome. There is no mountain we cannot remove. There's no challenge we cannot face. Therefore, Lord, we pray in spite of problems and predicaments and mountains and challenges, Lord, we pray we're still going to succeed in life in Jesus' name. Amen. The principles we need to know, the power we need to have, the determination we need to have, the diligence we need to manifest, we pray, Lord, you help us to have it in our lives in Jesus' name. Turn every life around. May failure to become success. And those who are down, lift them up in Jesus' name. Be glorified in every life, Lord. That we can render glory back to you in every life. In Jesus' name, we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Thank you very much. We're looking at a very important subject. This is not a kind of subject to entertain us. It's not a kind of subject to just motivate us. It's a kind of subject you need to get some handles on. And then to be able to say, I'm going to do something with that. I'm talking to you on persuaded to succeed despite present predicaments persuaded to succeed despite present predicaments can i just explain some of the words to you the word persuaded it means to have full assurance it means to be very sure beyond any shadow of doubt that here am i today and look at the place i want to be tomorrow and then I see some problems and hurdles and mountains and pitfalls and challenges in front of me. And yet, in spite of it all, I can tell you that I'm so sure, I'm so persuaded, beyond any shadow of doubt, the place I want to reach, I will reach. you reach there with me in Jesus' name. The next word there is succeed. To succeed. That's the opposite of being a failure. To succeed means to achieve. It means to accomplish. It means to get up and get something done. It means that you're not just flying through the air without making any path. You're not just swimming through the ocean without making a path. You're not going through life without making a mark. When you get to school and then your name enters the register, by the time you go out there, you are a star in that place you are going to be a star. And then after you have left, they can refer back to you as a pattern, as a model, as a star, as somebody that got in there and got something done, and then will say you have succeeded. Now, success is also having a lot of areas. For example, if you look at the tire of, um, of a bicycle, it has a hub at the center and has a lot of spokes, all those lines, the wire. The same thing with success. There is success in different, different areas. As a child, a success. As a neighbor, success. As a student, success. As a professional, success. As a person that is able to get something, invent something, or determine something, success. Any area of life. So you look at your life as having different spokes or different lines and say, praise the Lord, I'm successful here, successful here, successful here. We we'll call it all round success. That's what I'm going to have. I said that's what I'm going to have. All round success, you have it in Jesus' name. And then he talks about predicaments. Predicaments are hurdles. 
there are kind of pitfalls, there are difficulties and challenges. There are problems that somebody places on your way. Might be a teacher, might be a neighbor, might be an adult, might be a colleague, might be a peer, might be a classmate. That they say that he is running, she is running. And she wants to get to that place. And therefore, they dig some holes in front of you. That if you fall into that hole, then you cannot make it. Anything that stops your progress. Anything that Satan, society, people, adults, children, a fellow student, a prefect, anybody. Anything they put before you. So that you will not be able to cross over. That is a predicament. It's a challenge, it's a difficulty, it's a problem, and we're going to overcome. Yeah. And I have overcome, and because I overcome, you will overcome in Jesus' name. Yeah. Now, there's another word there is present. Present predicament. You know, there are people, they don't make a difference between past predicament, future predicament, and present predicament. Uh, what I mean is this. You know, we had some predicaments years ago. And there are some people, they get changed to the predicament of yesterday. It's a new day. It's a new month. And we're getting into a new year. But many, many people, the past predicament that they had, I remember when I was in primary four, and I used to have this problem. They get married to past predicaments. And you remember the song that, you know, a youth choir used to sing, One Day at a Time, Sweet Jesus, that you will give me the grace to live one day at a time. Yesterday is gone, and tomorrow I cannot predict, but just today, give me the grace today to live the life I ought to live so that you are not married, you are not chained, you are not attached to the past predicament. Other people, they have sleepless nights, not because there's any present problem, but because of the future, future predicament. They have a kind of sharp brain. And their brain is thinking and imagining, and they are inventing. What if I wake up tomorrow? I'm not able to rise up. What if I go to school tomorrow, and while I'm getting to school tomorrow, it can knock me down? What if what happened to my junior sister, senior brother, what if it happens to me? What if I do well now in secondary school, and then when I get to college or university, what if this happens? What if I finish my education and this happens? It has not happened. They're thinking of future predicament. And you see... You don't have grace today to solve the problem of tomorrow. And you don't have enough strength to be able to carry the load of yesterday. Yesterday is gone. It's like water under the bridge. Don't think about it anymore. I said don't think about it anymore. And then the future is yet to come. Forget about past predicament and forget about future predicament. Live one day at a time. Present predicament. Now the word despite. Look at that again. It says persuaded to succeed. Despite. Present predicaments. Despite. Despite means in spite of. Although this may be there. I see that but I don't think about it. I see it but it doesn't affect me. I see my goal. I don't see all the things between. It's like, look at this. Here I am. There is a mountain in front of me. And I say, I want to climb that mountain. You'll climb it with me. And then there's another mountain. It is higher than the first mountain. And I said, when I finish climbing this mountain, I'm going to climb the other mountain. But those two mountains, they have what we call a ditch in between them. And many people, they do not look at the top of the first mountain and the top of the second mountain that they want to climb. All they're looking at is they're looking at the ditch in between the mountains. But a person that is going to succeed is saying, I see the mountains, I don't see the valleys. The valleys are there. I just don't take knowledge of them. I don't think about them because 
what you think about will either promote you or will destroy you. Think about that. What you think about will either promote you, make you have success, or will kind of derail you, destroy you. If you are thinking about the negative, you develop a negative attitude. If you are thinking of the positive, hey, I can do it. I am going to do it. I have a dream, and I'm going to achieve that dream. How many of you have any dream? Some don't have dreams. You have any dream? Think about your dream. And don't think about, here is Reuben. That's part of the predicament. Here is Simeon. That's part of the predicament. Here is Judah. He, hey, here comes the dreamer. Let us kill him. Here are the dream killers. I'm not going to think about those dream killers because my dream is too big for me to think about. And I cannot think about any other. That, that's why it says that you're going to have that persuasion to succeed despite or in spite of present predicaments. How many people are still ready to succeed? Oh, you're ready to succeed. You will in Jesus' name. Yeah. Well, can I tell you, how many things am I going to tell you? One, two, tell me, three. Number one, present predicaments delay progress. Present predicaments delay progress. Mark what I say. You see, there are present predicaments. Sometimes, as a little child, we look at the predicament and we just sit down there in front of the predicament. I say, get up. Do something. Because as you're looking at that present predicament, you're thinking, you're imagining, you're having self-pity. Why am I like this? Why is my condition like this? Why is my position like this? I say, get up. Because as long as you are sitting down there, looking at that present predicament, you will delay your progress. Therefore, you must get up and do something. Say, I will do something. Look at Exodus chapter 1. Exodus chapter 1. I read there from verse 12. Exodus chapter 1, verse 12. It says in Exodus 1 verse 12, But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. The more they afflicted them, talk about suffering. Somebody else had suffering before. Talk about being an orphan. I'm an orphan. No daddy and no mommy. And there's nobody to send me to school. Talk about that. I've known other orphans too. The more they afflicted them and said the more they grew and multiplied. My parents are poor. That's a predicament. But don't sit down there. Just understand. Although my parents are poor, I'm not the first person to have my parents poor. I'm still going to achieve. You will achieve in Jesus' name. Other people, it is because of bereavement. You know, you just entered school, and as you just got into school, hey, listen to the information that is coming from whom so and so died. And because so and so died, it's like hope is dead, dream dead, vision dead, progress dead, life dead, heart dead, passion dead, determination is dead, discouragement has set in. And what happened to you? I am dead. I'm just a carcass, just moving about. Hope is dead. Life is dead. Dream is dead. Everything is dead because so and so died. Don't allow that predicament to hinder you and say, just because of that I cannot achieve. Others have your will. I said you will. Well, well, I'm sorry to say there are some young people, what can I say? They are broken homes. Daddy and mommy just disagreed. And they didn't think of us children. And then mommy just decided, I'm not going to live with your daddy anymore. And then your daddy is saying, you determine who you love. If you love your mommy, then go. And go and live in poverty together. And you are wedged in between daddy and mommy fighting together. And then where do I say? And mommy is telling a story about daddy. And daddy is telling a story about mommy to you, young man. Or you, young woman. I say, what am I going to do? You don't even have time to think about your future. That's a present predicament. Come in, but to say, I'm not going to allow the broken home and you know, daddy and mommy having problem. I'll pray for them and leave them in the hands of God, but I'm going to move on with my life. I said, You are going to move on with your life. 
So we don't allow separation of our parents to hinder us. That's a predicament. Number three, there's the lack of proper attention from our parents. The parents have not divorced. They're not separated. They are together. But you know, early in the morning, daddy is gone to work. And early in the morning, mommy is gone. I bought food, I bought pocket money, I bought uniform, I bought schooling, I bought whatever it is. And then you have to struggle and be something. You are going to be somebody in Jesus' name. Uh, sometimes that can be a predicament for you. And every time you're looking at other children, you see, you know, when we come to class and, you know, daddy is going to come, they're going to send a driver to pick uh, that other classmate and they take him. And me, I'm just there. There's no attention from my parents. Don't get into self-pity. Then the tears will begin to run while you're looking at all that. You say, no, I'm not going to allow that to hit that because I am persuaded. Everybody say, I'm persuaded. This single life I have, I'm going to make a success out of it in spite of all those predicaments. You know, at other times, it is the inability to secure admission to higher institution. And I can tell you stories upon stories. I finished my, you know, school cert. I finished this and that. And then I took jump and I just missed it by just two points. And then the following year again, I take, I missed it by just three points. And then it's on and on and on like that. And you know, some people have destroyed their lives just because of that little setback. Just because I didn't get it last year or year before, then I allowed that predicament to hinder me. It will not hinder you in Jesus' name. And then there's what we call disability. Well, disabilities are sometimes we see the disability. Like, uh, you know, somebody is blind, like, you know, Ellen Keller. Like, uh, somebody is deaf, completely deaf. Or like, somebody has polio in the leg and therefore is limping. Or like, somebody has uh, maybe a hunchback. Or somebody has, uh, you know, some kind of deformity that anytime they see you, it is what deformity you have, they're looking at. And you yourself also, that's all you're looking at all the time. It can become a predicament that you forget what you have just because of that little deformity. And I want to tell you today, look away from that because you are much better than what people say. And you are much better than what people see. And you are going to succeed in spite of all that in Jesus' name. That's what I'm talking about. Present predicaments that delay progress. If I talk about Joseph, my, that, that boy had great, great hindrances that could have hindered him. He could have given an excuse. Daddy is not here. Mommy is not here. They sold me to slavery. And this woman told a lie against me. And then they put me in the prison. He could have been crying the rest of his life. But he became a prime minister. And I see many of you here, I see you becoming, coming to the top. I see your head, you will not be tail. Yeah. Whatever happened yesterday, yesterday is gone. Forget about yesterday. And whatever is happening today, forget about today. The future is what matters. And I will see you on the top in Jesus' name. Yeah. There's a young man, his name is Jabez. When he was born, maybe I should read that to you. When he was born, the mother told him stories and stories and stories and said, My boy, Jabez. You were born in sorrowful times. And this is the suffering. This is the predicament. And this is what you have. But this young man, like you, I said like you, I said like you, he determined and he said, in spite of that, despite all that, I am going to make it. And he made it. I said he made it. I said he made it. And I'm looking at somebody here like Jabez who is going to make it. What is the person I'm looking for? Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. Tell the person by your side, I'm going to make it. Tell him, I'm going to make it. You know, there's a way we say, I'm going to make, I'm thinking about my predicament. I'm thinking about, hmm. pastor said, pastor said, I should tell you, I'm going to make it. But another person says, I know inside my heart. I know inside my spirit. I know that whatever faces me, whatever challenge it may be, I look at you face to face, eyeball to eyeball, and I said, I am going to make it. Where are you? I said, where are you? You've made it already in Jesus' name. Let me show you First Chronicles chapter, chapter 4. First Chronicles chapter 4. 
I'm reading there from verse 9. And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. And his mother called his name Jabez, saying, Because I bear him was sorrow. And Jabez called on the name of the Lord of Israel. You all pray. And God will answer your prayer. Saying, Oh, that each thou wouldest bless me indeed. God will bless you. And enlarge my coast. It will enlarge your coast. You know what it means to enlarge your coast? It means that, well, I think your father would like to hear this. I think mommy would like to hear this. You'll be greater than daddy and mommy. However great they are, however educated they are, however elevated, exalted they are, go back and, you know, say it with due respect and say it with humility. Forget what they told you. You are destined for the top. Yeah. And that destiny, the Lord will fulfill it in Jesus' name. Yeah. Look at that. Look at that in verse 10. It says, and Jabez called on the name of the Lord God of Israel, saying, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed and enlarge my cause. It will enlarge your cause. And then it says, and that thine hand might be with me. The hand of the Lord will be with you. And that thou wouldest keep me from evil. It will keep you from evil. No evil will befall you in Jesus' name. And God granted him that which he requested. And God has answered your prayer. Yeah. I told you number one, present predicament delaying progress. Number two now, number two, powerful principles determine promotion. Powerful principles determine promotion. You see in our lives, there are some principles we need to hold on to. And we just say that whatever is happening, the wind may blow. I have a principle. And this principle is powerful enough to carry me over. And then there may be storm on the sea of life. But whatever the wave and whatever the storm and whatever challenge or difficulty or problem or predicament, I just know that there is a principle that I'm holding on to. And those principles are powerful and mighty and strong. And it is when you hold on to that, that whatever it is may be happening, your progress and promotion is determined already in Jesus' name. What did I say? Number two is powerful principles determine promotion. Let me tell you something before I go on. I about people who don't have any principle. No principle at all. They just wake up in the morning and they eat. They take their bath. Then they eat. And then they don't have any principle of saying, this is what I will do. This is what I will not do. This is where I will go. This is where I will not go. This is who I will befriend. This is who I will not befriend. This is how I will study. This is how I will not study. This is when I will get up and do something. This is when I will work. This is when I will play. They don't have any clue about life. There is no principle. They just live, they just follow. They just follow the crowd, follow the multitude. If everybody is playing, they are playing. If everybody is singing, they are singing. If everybody is roaming around, they are roaming around. They don't have any principle at all in life. And you show me a person like that, that has not determined in his life, this is where I am going, this is the path that takes me there, and this is the principle. And I take this principle as part of my life. What I mean by that is, as I will not part with my right hand, and I will not allow anybody to cut off my right hand. I will not allow anybody to take these powerful principles away from me. As I will not allow anybody to just remove my high eyeball. I will not allow anybody to remove this principle. It means I'm, I'm saying that there is a principle that is mighty and powerful. That if you hold on to these principles, no matter the storm and no matter the challenge, that top, you will get to the top. But you know, you have to have, you have to be in possession of such principles. And you have to hold on to that principle. And once anyone wants to cut off that principle, like want you to cut off you, say, hey, hey, come on. You cannot do that because this is part of my life. Without principle, there's no progress. 
Without principle, there is no success. Without principle, there is no achieving of any dream. That's the reason why you say this principle is so powerful and mighty. I'm holding on to it and nobody can take it away from me. It is such people in life that always make it and you will make it. So we're going to look at that now. Powerful principles determine what? Promotion. Promotion. Ready for promotion? I said ready for promotion. You know, there's, uh, there's a story in this uh, good, wonderful book, Bible, in Daniel chapter 3. Daniel chapter 3. Daniel chapter 3. And I'm reading there to start with. I'm reading verse 30. Daniel chapter 3, verse 30. Are you there? Have you opened the Bible? How many people have seen Daniel? Oh, wonderful. Wonderful children. God bless you. I say God bless you. Amen. You know, small amen, small blessing. Amen. Wonderful. Look at this, look at this. This is Daniel chapter 3, verse 30. Daniel chapter 3, verse 30. Then the king, what's the next word? Promoter Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. It doesn't matter what province. Province of Babylon, province of Greece, province of America, province of Europe, province of Nigeria, province of Africa, wherever God has that promotion waiting for you. But Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had principle that Nebuchadnezzar could not take away from them. That Babylon could not take away from them. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had a strong, powerful, mighty principle that the threats of Nebuchadnezzar could not destroy. Nebuchadnezzar said, did I hear that you, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you will not bow down to my idol? And then you will not worship when you hear the music of Babylon. Now I give you a second chance. He said, don't waste your breath. Forget about that. If you want to throw us into the fight, go ahead and do it. Our God is able to deliver us. And he will deliver us from your hand, O king. And then he said, even if he does not deliver us, that is principle. A person said, I know my God will deliver me out of this. And because of that, I'm not going to do this. But then he said, what if he doesn't deliver you? Even if he doesn't deliver me out of this, this is my principle. I'm not going to worship idol. Whatever the threat, you will not worship idol. Yeah. You know, when you have a principle like that, heaven backs up people with backbones. Heaven is not interested in people, amphibians. Amphibians, those are those uh, mammals or whatever. You have done, you've done it in biology. They are neither good for the sea nor for the land. No backbone. Jellyfish. They're just like that. And if you throw a little kind of threat at them, they begin to shake and say, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I didn't mean, okay, uh, play the music again. I will bow down. At least in my heart, I will not bow down. But if it is to bow down, okay, if that is what you want, uh-uh. Those people, God doesn't back them up. They don't have any backbone. But the people that have backbone and they can stand, those are the people heaven will back up. And if you make up your mind, you say, I'm going to have backbone. I said, I'm going to have backbone. Ah, the youths have slept on me. I said, I'm going to have backbone. When you have that backbone, I'm telling you, heaven will back you up. And so Nebuchadnezzar became angry. And God didn't show up. He allowed Nebuchadnezzar to be angry. And then he said, hit the forty seven times over. And God didn't show up to deliver them. And the furnace was heated seven times over. And he told this, bind them up. I'm going to show them something. And these people, why did God wait? Why didn't he say, because these are my own children, shake that Meshach and Abengo, let me deliver them, because he wanted to see their breaking point. You see, almost everybody has breaking point. Breaking point. That, you know, if you hit a little, they're still standing. 
you increase a little, they're still standing. And when the kind of predicament or problem or challenge or difficulty, when it increases, it increases to the point that some people will break at that point. That's your breaking point. That's your breaking point. But the Lord was waiting to find out do Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, do they have a breaking point? And then God discovered they didn't have any breaking point. And then eventually, he said, they bound them up and he threw them into the furnace. And then, while in the furnace, is then because their breaking point had no limit. Your breaking point would have no limit. That means that they'll not be able to break your conscience or break your stamina. Or break your determination. That's the principle. A person that is so determined and says, I know this is the right thing to do. And I'm going to do that right thing. No matter the predicament or the problem, that determination, that is it. You are going to have it in Jesus' name. Now, as students, let's say you have backbone. How many people have backbone? Of course you do. How many people have conviction? Of course you have. And how many people have this principle I'm talking about that will stay and stay with the Lord and you will see the end of the devil and the devil will not see your end. Yeah. If you look at that story, all the people that threw them into the fire, they didn't see the end of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, but Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego saw their end. And then Nebuchadnezzar himself later became so mental, he was driven to the forest for seven seasons, seven years. They saw his end, but he never saw their end. The devil will not see your end. Yeah. But you will see the backside of the devil while he's running away from you in Jesus' name. Yeah. Now, let's say I have principle. Let's say you have principle like me. I said you have principle like me. I said you have principle like me. What else do I do? Number one, set personal goals. If you don't know where you are going, you'll never bother to take transportation to go there. You have to determine where you are going before you can get there. So set personal goals. Number two, have workable timetable for effective time management. You know, what if you just, I will work, I will work. And I say, what work are you going to do? I will study, I will study. I say, what are you going to study? There's no timetable. You just, anything you want, you just pick up anytime you begin to read. That's not how to study. You make a timetable, a workable timetable. Why do we say workable? Don't make it so overloaded that nobody can do it. And don't make it so lax or so relaxed that it really doesn't achieve anything. Have a workable timetable. Number three, pursue your goals and work hard at it. Pursue your goals and work hard at it. Pursue, pursue those goals. I will pursue my goals. I said I will pursue my goals. You know, sometimes when you're pursuing, you're running after something. Just about the time you have to catch that thing like this, you feel tired. But what you want to catch is still on the go, is moving on. And if you're going to catch something that is moving in front of you, your speed has to be a little bit higher and greater than what you are pursuing in front of you. Do you think you understand what I mean? That is, a boy is running, you are playing, and a boy is running in front of you. And then you are running after him. There is a space in between you and that boy. If he is running at the same speed as you are running, you'll never catch him. Therefore, if you're going to catch him, your speed has to be a little bit higher, more than the speed of that boy in front of you. The same thing with life. The same thing with life. If you want to catch success, success is always running. If you want to catch progress or promotion, it's always running ahead of us. That's why many of the children, many of the students, they don't get anything because they go slowly and the progress is running in front of them faster. The qualifications to enter university now is becoming higher because, you know, there are not enough universities 
and then the qualifications have to be kind of uh, lifted up or raised so that they'll be able to shed off and disqualify many people. And if you are going to be able to reach that goal, you make your speed a little bit higher than those of yesterday or of yesteryears. That's what I mean then, that you will pursue. You will pursue those goals. You will not be tired. I will not be tired. I said I will not be tired. God bless every one of you in Jesus' name. Look at Judges, Judges chapter 8. Judges chapter 8. Judges chapter 8, verse 4. It says, And Gideon came to Jordan and passed over. He and the 300 men that were with him faint, faint. He was tired. You can get tired. Even Gideon got tired. Even the 300 uh, valiant men got tired. Even sometimes David got tired. Even Moses got tired. Even Elijah got tired. You'll get tired. Even Jesus, he, he was tired and then he was sitting by the well wanting to drink water and told that woman of Samaria, give me water to drink. Everybody gets tired once in a while. It is, there's no problem getting tired. It is what you do when you are tired that's what makes the difference. When you are faint, when you are tired, when you are, get, when you are discouraged, everybody gets discouraged. Don't say, it's only me. Sometimes I get, hey, everybody gets discouraged. But it is what you do at that time. Then you remember your principle. You say, I have a place to go. I'm going to get there. I have a mountain to climb. I'm going to climb it. I have something to achieve, and I'm going to achieve it. It is the people that hold on to their principle on the day of their fainting and tiredness. Those are the people that make it. And if you just hold on to that, and you say, even when I'm tired, I'll still go to school. When I'm fainting, I'll still do my studies. And when anything is happening, I'm still going to hold on to my purpose and my goal, and I'm going to make it. I see you on the top already. Look at that, Judges chapter 8, and it says in verse 4, the middle part of that, it says on the 300 men that were with him, they, they were faint, they fainted, and yet pursuing, yet pursuing, yet pursuing. That is what will make it, and you will make it. Number four is to motivate and inspire and improve yourself daily. Motivate yourself. You know what it means to motivate yourself? Let's say, for example, you see a, you know, a classmate and she's uh, crying and she's weeping and she's saying, I don't think I can make it again. I don't think I can come back to school because this is happening at home, this is happening to me and this is happening to everybody around me. What do you do? You encourage her. You encourage him. You say, don't talk like that. Don't think like that. And you say something that fellow will begin to change and then she'll wipe away the tears and say, ah, do you think I can make it and then you say more again and say more again after you say that she's ah i didn't thank you very much i didn't know that i can still succeed and then she goes back uh, to school and then everything becomes all right what i'm saying is now what to tell another person when he's discouraged tell yourself all those good good things to say to pump them up to stir them up to encourage them and to tell them get up you can do something when you get discouraged tell yourself are you not a preacher preach to yourself are you not a counselor counsel yourself and motivate yourself what you will say to other people you ask yourself i feel dejected i feel unhappy I feel like crying. After you said that, then you ask yourself, if I saw another person feeling the way I feel now, what will I tell him? Tell yourself. How will I counsel them? Counsel yourself. How will I encourage them? Encourage yourself. Motivate yourself. Inspire yourself. And you will make it in Jesus' name. And then, number, what number now? I, wonderful, wonderful. Say, I'm a wonderful youth. You are really. Number five, choose a successful person as role model. Birds of the same feather flock together. And if you want to succeed, find a successful person. And then say, the way they are, I want to be like that. The things they've done, I want to do that too. Number six, believe in God and believe in yourself. Believe in God and believe as you say, I don't understand. What I mean is, believe that God is a good God. He never created anything bad. God is a smart God. He never created a dummy. 
And God is a successful God. He never created a failure. And he created me. And I cannot be a failure because I'm a product of God. If I think that I can fail, it means I'm saying God created a failure. And God never creates failures. And he created me. I cannot be a failure. I will not be a failure. I said I will not be a failure. Did I tell you the story that, you know, the children, they go to school this day. And the teacher then began to say, now I am your teacher. I am Jane. I am this and this. I've taught this class for this many years and all this. And now I've introduced myself to you. Now children, introduce yourself to me. And one boy rose up and said, I am so and so. And my parents never went to college. Uh, they were farmers. But they told me to come to college. And uh, I don't know whether I'll make it, but I've come. So, madam, whatever you can do for me, I am here. Thank you. And then another child uh, rose up and said, I come from a poor background. I cannot do that. I cannot do this, but I'm here now. And whatever teacher you can do for me, uh, it will be wonderful. Then this boy, rose up, this boy rose up and said, hey, I'm Johnny. And I'm bright. Because God never made any dummy. And I'm successful because God never made a failure. And then he said, all these other young people who are here, I just want to announce to you, this is first day in school that I'm going to be number one here because God made, to be, made me to be head. And everybody was looking at him. Look at this boy. They said he was proud. He said, no, I'm not proud. I'm a boy. If I say I'm a boy, am I proud? Tell me. And God has made me a success. If I say God has made a success, not a failure, am I proud? I want to tell you that that boy led the class that session. Because he said, that is what I will do, and he did it. You go back and tell yourself, when you wake up in the morning, and you look at the mirror, and then you see that person in the mirror, point to that person in the mirror, and that person in the mirror will point back to you. You get my point? And they'll say, you are a success. You will not fail. You are head, you will not be tail." You will make it because Jesus Christ has created the success for you. After you look at him in the mirror, look at him face to face and point at him and say, you will succeed. And carry that and go to school, you will succeed. I said you will succeed. So that's the, that's, the, that's the principle we ought to have so that whatever is happening, we know that we believe in God and we believe in ourselves too. Number seven is be disciplined, be determined, be diligent, and have passion. Let your life be a life of zeal. Not a so-so boy, a so-so girl, a so-so youth. I don't know whether I will survive or not. I'm tired. Don't be tired. It's true early in the morning to be tired. Successful people don't get tired in the morning. They get up and they do something. I will do something in Jesus' name. Now, point number three. Everybody say number three. Peculiar progress despite predicaments. Peculiar progress. Peculiar progress. Peculiar progress despite predicaments. Now, as we have said, people have this, uh, uh, they have um, predicaments and I can stay here and tell you stories upon stories of people who have succeeded in the past who had predicaments and I know that whatever predicament you have we're taking authority in Jesus name and by the grace of God you will win the race in Jesus name say I will win the race in Jesus name you have won already it is confirmed in heaven you are a winner you are not a loser you are a conqueror. You are not a captive. Yeah. We are looking at Exodus, Exodus, Exodus. By the way, Exodus is the second book of the Bible. Ah, you say, I know that. I know you know it. But there is somebody there I need to tell. So that they will know that I am now in Exodus, the second book of the Bible. Exodus, I am looking at chapter 14. Exodus chapter 14. And then I'm looking at verse 11. And they said unto Moses, Because there were no graves in Egypt, hast thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? Wherefore hast thou dealt thus with us to carry us forth out of Egypt? 
You, you know there are people, every time there's a little problem, they are talking about dying, to die in this wilderness. When there was no water, you want us to die in this wilderness. When there was no food, you want us to die in this wilderness. When the Egyptians are coming, every time die, die, die. I don't want to use that word. I, I will live. I said I will live. If there's no water on Tuesday, at least there will be water on Wednesday. The water that is not there on Tuesday will not kill me. I will live. And if the, if the universities are on strike in a December, they can resume in January. In December, I will leave. And if my parents are, you know, they're unhappy with each other, you know, even the teeth sometimes, the teeth have problems, and they fight the tongue, and the tongue doesn't go on vacation and say, I'm not going to stay here again. The tongue is still there with all the kind of, uh, you know, conflict that sometimes the teeth have together. I will leave, whatever the problem may be. These children of Israel, every time there's any problem, we will we'll die, we will we'll die. I will not die. I said I will not die. Because the word of God says with long life will I satisfy him. So if you don't want to die, why are you always talking about, uh, you know, uh, it's even better to die. It's even better to die. What have you done in life that you want to die? You will not die. Yeah. Even those who want to, I will not allow them. I said I will not allow them. Because I break that spirit of death in your life in Jesus' name. And so, when they cried out like that, then Moses said, why are you talking like this? Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. And then he began to pray and God said, Moses, why are you crying to me? Don't tell them to stand still. Tell them to do what? Tell me out loud. Tell me out loud. Tell me out loud. When we see Pharaoh coming at us and we see the mountains on our sides and we see the Red Sea in front of us, that's predicament. Talk about predicament on the one side here, one side there, at the back and in, in the front. And then the attitude stands still and see what the Lord will do. And the Lord will say, don't stand still, keep on moving. Keep on moving. It's the people that keep on moving that will reach that goal. You will reach that goal in Jesus' name. Didn't we show you the film of Nick? Uh, this is this uh, that child, that young man that was born without limbs. Have you seen that before? No hand, no limbs, just head and the trunk of the body. And you see him how he moves about and do this, and then he'll play football. And you, when she was in school, the you know the other children were making fun of him. He could have said, "Your father is a pastor. If God is a good God." While we're here, allow a pastor to have a child like this without hands, without legs, without any limbs. And then you go to school, everybody bullies you, everybody threatens you, everybody makes fun of you. Nick will not think like that. He said, I'm going to be a success. He became more successful than the people that have hands and legs and everything. You have legs, you have eyes, you have ears, you have brain, you have mind, you have Jesus, you have the Bible, you have the promises of God, you have me, you have our national coordinator, you have our sisters and brothers, you have the people that will, will take your hand like this, will say, come on, we're going to get to the top with Jesus and God and the Holy Spirit and the Bible and the promises of God and me and our leaders here and all of us will take your hand, will say, let us go, you will get there. So don't you ever think in your life because of this, because of that, because of that. There is no because of anything. Because of Jesus. I said because of Jesus. I said because of Jesus. I'm getting somewhere. Where are you? I said where are you? Why are you sitting down? Those soldiers don't sit. You get up and say, I will get there. I will get there. I will... Open your mouth and talk to the Lord. This is not the time to be tired. This is not the time to be tired. Don't let the devil catch you tired. Say, Lord, I'm going to make it. You will make it in Jesus' name. Despite all the predicaments and despite all the problems and despite all those challenges and despite all those difficulties, whatever it is, a pebble, a stone, a hill, a mountain, a hurdle, a challenge, a river, Red Sea, whatever, move on. We're going to get there. 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 Tell the Lord, tell the Lord, tell the Lord. Peculiar, peculiar progress. Despite the predicaments, we'll make it. 
will make it, will make it, will make it, you will make it. Look at yourself and say, I am a success. I am a success. You have Jesus on your side. You have the Holy Ghost in your heart. You have the Father watching over you. You have the promises of God. You have salvation. You have a good church. You have a good father in the Lord, a good mother in the Lord. You have a good leader here. And you have leaders in the various areas where you are. How won't you make it? God has surrounded you with all those great, powerful men and women of God. You must make it. You must make it. You must make it. Have a strong, mighty, powerful, positive principle. And say, Lord, I will make it. Throw all the discouragements away. Don't think of past predicaments. That's water under the bridge is gone. The present day, living one day at a time, one day at a time, one day at a time, we will make it. In Jesus' name we pray. I see an army of conquerors. No devil can stop this army. No evil spirit can stop this army. No sickness can stop this army. No enemy can stop this army. No Egyptian can stop this army. The world, the flesh, and the devil all combined together, they will not be able to stop you in Jesus' name. The Lord has made you the head, you will not be a tail. The Lord has given you a promotion, you will not come down to the valley. The Lord told me to come and hand over that promotion to you. That progress to you. And you have it this day in Jesus' name. Cut off the rope that binds you to the past failure. And say bye-bye to that failure. And let that failure flow down the river. And you stay atop and you stay on top. And let failure flow away. Let discouragement flow away. Let all those paths of darkness flow away. Today, you have climbed to the top of the mountain. You will see the glory of the Lord. Raise up those anointed hands. Believe today, believe today, believe today. Nothing happens by accident. We didn't know that this meeting would be like this, but God, God, Plant this for you. And you will get what he has planned for you in Jesus' name. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you and bless your name for this glorious, special day, a unique day. Oh Lord, I pray the uniqueness of this day will be upon everyone here in Jesus' name. All the failures of the past, all the discouragement of the past, all the defeat of the past, all the oppression of the past, all the affliction of the past, oh Lord, we release them now. Go away from their lives in Jesus' name. Pharaoh, magicians, Egyptians, Babylonians, Syrians, you will not touch any of these boys and girls. They are no more your captives. They are more than conquerors. You are released in Jesus' name. I cut you away from any negative past. I cut you away from any oppressive power. I cut you away from any magical power. I cut you away from any hereditary sickness in Jesus' name. The spirit of the conqueror. The spirit of the achiever and the spirit of a successful person i pass unto you in jesus name all your discouragement will cancel everything and lord i pray that the thing that made them timid or afraid before frightening them lord i close the door against all those things right now in jesus name up to the mountain up to the mountain up to the mountain 
Confirm it in every life in Jesus' name. Lord, promotion for everyone. Progress for everyone. Abundant provision for everyone. Power for everyone. Confirm it, O oh Lord, in every life. I thank you because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, 